simulating toolpaths on the radiuses on the part. We're adding some radiuses where where there's sharp edges right now, um, so that when the customer goes to install it, they're not cutting their hands on a sharp part. On this operation, we're creating the raised lettering portion of the part, so we're using a really small end mill to actually bring the letters up um, above the surface and then kind of out, just outline the letters so it takes takes a little bit longer. At the end, it'll look a lot nicer than just an engraved letter. So why does it take longer to use the small bit? Right? Well, smaller bits, you can only feed them so much and then they'll just start breaking or chipping. The rigidity of the tool is less than like say like a half inch end mill. Or on this one we're using a, a 16th ball nose end mill to actually create the outlines of the letters and bring them up. The, the tool, the, the machine is actually drawing on the material, um, you know, 10 thousandths at a time, so it's really, really small. All right, now we're gonna make some hose. Some hose. Some hose. With an end mill. How hard is that cooler coming out? Uh, about a thousand psi for chip removal, really, so that the cutter can cut freely and not run over the chips that it's, you know, creating. I know you didn't do your hair. Come on. Come on. What are we looking at? We're looking at the final product. Took a long time to make it. We took it from concept to design to actually making it all in the same facility with a great team of people. So what's the next part of the process now? Next part of the process is taking it off of the machine, uh, cleaning it up, and fitting it, fitting it onto the blower, the bottom end of the blower, make sure it fits um, and make sure everything's good. And letting Steven see it and see how he likes it and give, give us his feedback on it. If he doesn't like it, then he can throw it through our window and we'll make something that he likes. <laughs> Come on in a little more. Come on in, Jay. Now we clean it. Take one. <laughs> it didn't work. Damn it, it's not sharp enough. I gotta uh, hold it tight. Uh oh. Oh. I gotta go over that one. Hold Take. it out. Take two. Take three. Take five. <laughs> you wanna go and tear the paper first? <laughs> <laughs> okay, really. I don't think cut it. Huh? I don't know. It's not as sharp as it was. It's not as sharp as it was. What happened? What'd you do to it? We rubbed on it. Rub on it. Rub on it. It's not as sharp as it you was. It. That was a rip. That was a rip. Yeah. It's not a rip. Look. See, it's a rip. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Maybe if I double it up. <laughs> Paper airplane. Not gonna work. I don't think it's sharp enough for it. It's not sh hold on. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now he's <laughs> <to> rub it. <laughs> See? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
No, it's not sharp it's anymore. Not a, yeah, because we, we polish it. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. Yeah, he messed it all up. Yeah. That's what happens around here. Either way, though. Pretty sharp. I mean, the best way to see, Sean, is look. Let me see your finger. <laughs> Hold on. I'll show you right now. <laughs> see how sharp it you is? ain't going to reach up that high, fool. You have to bring the lid down. <laughs> baseline the C7Z06 that carbon edition one uh, if y'all watched our video probably a week ago we took it to the drag strip uh, we only made one pass and it went a 930 at 147 uh, the customer was happy with the time uh, but we have been developing a new supercharger lid for this thing. So it's a billet supercharger lid that's going to replace the factory one. I'm hoping it'll be a little bit more efficient. Hopefully it'll flow a little bit more air, give us a little more horsepower. So, that being said, this is the way the car went to the track. Uh, I haven't messed with any timing or any fueling. Y'all can see it's around 920 rear-wheel horsepower in roughly 760 to 783 torque. I just made three back-to-back-to-back -back -back pulls right now. Uh, Dan is about to swap the lid. Um, and the, again, this is behind the scenes stuff, so we're literally going to R&D it, meaning we're going to put it on. It might not pick up anything. Um, hopefully it does and we're all good, but if it doesn't, that's when we can go back through and make our changes that are needed and come back tomorrow or the next day and try it again and keep testing the product until we're happy with the results. Expects in like 10, 15. That same. same. <laughs> Holy. Wow. I mean, between those two, I mean, let's just average 920, let's say, right? Between those three pools. Yeah, you're talking 43 rear wheel horsepower and over, what is that? Almost 40 rear wheel torque. Just from bolting on a lid like that, man, that's awesome. And again, I've left everything alone. This is 100% street trim, meaning the timing in it, the air filter on it. This is just how the customer would take it. Um, obviously, if we go to the track, uh, we could turn, put you know, timing in it, uh, get rid of the air filter, and do our other little tricks that we do to get it uh, way above a thousand horsepower. But I think it looks good all billet. But I'm sure we'll put some uh, different colors in there and see what customers think. So if y'all are watching this. Uh, give us your input on what y'all think on colors. Do y'all like it all billet and showy under the hood? Or would you, uh, you know, powder coat some of it black or some of it maybe blue to match your car or red or so forth? But leave some comments below. 
let me know what you guys think. All right, so yesterday we finished testing uh, the R&D of our new billet lid that I designed. Um, and we showed you the results of just bolting the lid on and no tuning, just showing the other lid versus the billet lid. And the gains were roughly uh, 39, I think, rural horsepower and around 49 torque. Uh, after the guys left, I stayed and I actually tuned it with the billet lid on it. And with the same timing and same air fuel and same everything as I did previously for a max effort with the old lid, I did obviously with the billet lid and this can show you the difference. So the red one is where I finished last night, which is 1024 and 856. So that's a solid 50 rear horsepower more. Um, and again, this is both I call it like a max effort um, with the air filter on and street trim uh, with timing and fueling exactly where it should be. Uh, the 975 again was with the old lid that I did like a week ago and then uh, obviously last night with the new billet lid uh, you can see the results and they speak for themselves. So not only did just bolting it on did we see gains and then obviously tuning it uh, with the exact same timing so it's not like I'm saying I'm not trying to make more horsepower by tricking it and adding two or three degrees more timing to get that number. Both those graphs have the exact same timing in them and the exact same air fuel. So that just shows you how much more efficient uh, that lid is. With that other lid, I did have to put a little bit more fuel in it, which also shows you that it is more efficient because obviously more air going into the motor needs more fuel to burn to make the extra horsepower and it did. So again, all in all, successful first R&D. I really thought we were going to have to go back and make a few changes to it, um, but I'm happy with it and I can't wait to go test it on the street. I hope you enjoyed this video guys. A uh, little bit different than our normal stuff. A little behind the scenes of R&D. Um, not stuff we do every day, but you know, to stay up with the times and to stay on top uh, in this game, you got to do stuff like this. Um, so thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Again, like I said before, leave some comments below if y'all like the way she looks. Later, guys.